Welcome back. Now we're going to talk today about population decline, which we've touched on in different areas before, and how you can actually help wild chinchillas. My name is Amy Dean, and our this video series, once again, is being funded by ZGAP and Tulsa Zoo. So declining diversity, and not biodiversity and population. So you lose a population, you lose part of a population, you, you lose the biodiversity in that area. And for chinchillas, we know that 3 million were exported from Chile from that one area in Chile during these 26 years. We talked about this in the very first lecture, but it turns out there were over 7 million exported that we have a record of. And of that, that means 21 million were probably killed. And so when you have a species with slow reproduction, this decimates the population. They can't recover fast enough as they're being taken out of the system. So causes are, as we've seen, hunting, um, but also habitat destruction. And for chinchillas, we're talking about um, mining and free ranging livestock and exotic animals that were introduced like the rabbit and the hare. And then you have excess killing by humans, which we've seen for chinchillas and other animals, not just chinchillas, competition or predation. Now predation for the chinchillas is the cats and dogs that are feral in the area. And the competition for them would be um, competition, not only from animals within their own system, but also those rabbits and hares that just go through and really destroy the, um, the vegetation as well as the goats that are free ranging. So the, the, the herders let the animals out in the morning, they go out and they eat whatever they want of the native vegetation or the exotic vegetation that's come in. And then they come back at night and then the outbreak of disease can cause a population to just really fall rapidly. And we've seen that recently with different kinds of bird flus. And then with COVID, of course, um, that would be a, a more recent example of a new disease. So, Extinction is strongly, is, it's area dependent. So what you're looking at here is a map of some of the colonies in, in Alco and the ones in green are larger than they used to be. The ones in red are smaller than they were before. This map was made like the, the um, compared to another map and another, this is a time series, right? And then the extinct ones are in gray. And if you look over in the, the center of the right-hand side, you'll see there's three little gray dots and those are further away from the green areas or the red areas. And because they were so much further away, they were more likely to go extinct because they're smaller and they're further away. And although this isn't an island, but you can consider these islands on mountains. So species numbers decrease with the size of islands and the distance from the mainland. Habitat destruction is the greatest concern for species populations and the, the habitat destruction is because of consumerism, basically. Uh, what we want to eat, what we choose to eat, so if you're choosing to eat meat or beef, especially from Brazil, that's the rainforest being destroyed. And that is why I became a vegetarian. People believe that it was because of the chinchillas and my love for animals. It was because I heard about the rainforest. Um, I learned about this in college 30 years ago. And it just really, the thought of that much rainforest being decimated every day just so people can eat cows just blew my mind. Um, in Indiana, in the Midwest of the United States, the native forests are gone and they've been planted with corn and that corn doesn't go to feed humans. It goes to feed livestock that then the humans eat, like, like uh, corn for chickens or pigs or horses or whatever eats corn, I don't know, but livestock. So it takes for that, it takes so much more land to grow crops, to feed livestock for us to eat the livestock than if we would have just ate the corn. We could have fed a lot more people and saved a lot of habitat. So in rainforest, a five meter by 50 meter plot of land has more tree species than all of Great Britain. I don't know what the, those numbers are, just that the tropics are very important. Brazil is important. Uh, other areas along the tropics are important because of the diversity there, the number of species. All right. Um, like I said before, habitat destruction for chinchillas means mining, free-ranging livestock, and human expansion into this area where this reserve is. But I'm going to zoom in on this slide if I can. Oh, yes, I can. So here's the reserve. Uh, it's a little butterfly shape right in the middle. And all these squares and different layers of squares are all mining claims to this area. So this is what we mean by mining 
and its effects on the chinchilla population. And what happens with mining is you build a road and so you have access into that area and then you have people going there and clearing the firewood or the native vegetation and using it for firewood. You have the people working the mines, making fires to heat up their lunches. Um, and just the clearing of the land and the puyas and the plants that chinchillas really need to survive. Uh, as I said before, this is actually in Alco. I don't know whose goats these are, which one of us took these. Oh, it looks like Theo took this picture. Probably Juan's goats, our neighbor down the street. Could be anyone's. Um, so what they do is they let the goats out in the morning. They go out, they eat native vegetation. They come back in the evening and it just decimates the vegetation. And it turns out that 43% of the earth's surface is desert or semi-desert. Now those are the normal native natural deserts are biologically diverse. They have some different animals, plants and animals that are adapted to live in that area. Um, these new deserts are not biologically diverse. These new areas that are just being clear are just wasteland, like where our, our station was. It was just a wasteland and it had been that way since 1964 when the last farmer left that land and nothing had come in in 50 years now. All right, so how can you help the wild chinchillas? The first thing you can do is educate others because without education, we do not have any sense of knowledge that something needs to be done. And we have on our website here, this is what our website looks like. And the, you'll in the introduction, and we have it in four languages here is English, Spanish, French, and German, I believe. Um, so here we have education. And lots of this educational information can actually be found also under children and niños. Because if we start educating at a younger age, will have more of an impact, I think. So here we have a word search of the plants the chinchillas eat. And this is in Spanish because I, it was given out to the schools in Chile. Um, we have a coloring book and these are all downloadable. And if you want to just scroll through it, you can look at the different lion, leon we have here, because that's what they also call the mountain lion or the puma or Felis concal or that scientific name. And then we have children's stories and we have the slides, and then we have these other slides that teach the difference between the wild chinchillas and the pet chinchillas, just so people understand this. Um, much different, and that's for children. And then you can go back to our educational site. You can spread these, you can copy these, you can paste them, you can download them, you can print them. It, any way to get this word out about the chinchillas. Uh, you can spread our videos from our YouTube channel. These are called fact sheets, and what it is, it's information about that species. So here we have the long-tailed chinchilla, chinchilla land and hair, or land and hair, however you're going to write it. Um, it's in English and in Spanish. And then we have the short-tailed chinchilla, and it has, you know, what they do, information about them, their conservation, and how you can help them. Just the chinchilla, the food that chinchilla eats by season. And if you go up to our link under more, at the very bottom, this is for more advanced people. Let me see if we can get this up to pull up some, any of these papers. Um, here's the first papers on behavior and how to conduct behavior studies, mammalian species. We want this paper right here to look at. This is the official paper for this species. And it talks about their genetics and everything else. But if you really want to research chinchillas, you go to the bibliography of these or the works cited sections of these papers. And that's where you can get more additional information. You can look at who wrote what article we're referring to and then pull up that article and you can learn that. And then you, maybe you want to look in that reference system. So learning, your, educating yourself and others about chinchillas helps. Let's get back to our slides. Reducing, reduce your buying or purchasing of you, um, reduce what you buy. Consumerism is the number one cause of animal dis habitat destruction and population declines. Um, purchased use items to, discrete, to um, decrease the manufacturing and the transportation of goods because that is adding a lot of carbon to our atmosphere, shipping these items. Um, and it, all this helps to conserve chinchillas and other wildlife. A big one for chinchillas, every computer, smartphone, every electronic that you have in your house has copper in it. Chili, Chile, I believe, is the number one exporter of copper for the world. And copper mining and gold mining are what is decimating chinchilla habitat and has over time. It's nothing new. Um, so if you're going to buy 
by stuff by use silver, gold, or copper, and also recycle those. Recycle your cell phones. The cell phones actually have some, I, I don't remember what, what mineral it is or metal um, inside of it. And that is exactly where I believe it's the mountain gorillas in Africa. It, their habitat's being destroyed because of this metal. So take your old cell phones, take your old cell phone chargers, take your headphones, take them to be recycled. Lots of zoos have a program where they have a box that collects them. If not, search online. In our, in, in our city, I don't know in everyone's cities, um, they have a special place for hazard recycling. So you can't put this in your normally recy normal recycling bin, but you can take it and drop it off. Same with batteries. And so recycle as much as you can. And remember, it doesn't matter. Recycling is great, but it turned out that most of what we put in our recycling bin doesn't end up being recycled because either they don't know how to yet or it costs too much. So it's just try and reduce your consumption. And then also plant native vegetation for wildlife, wherever you are. Go and plant some trees that are native to your area. Um, some plants that are normally in that area. Birds, get some berry, some plants that produce berries and stuff that are native to your area. Maybe it's nothing you would eat, like beauty berry or I don't know, whatever berry, but the animals will. And that helps wildlife. And helping wildlife in one spot, really, there's a trickle effect and it helps it everywhere. So just become active, plant some stuff, recycle, buy a little bit less. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. You taking the time to learn this. Um, I can go over the slide real fast for you. Here's Rigo um, fixing a hole in our water tank. Myself holding a small, uh, short-tailed, yeah, short-tailed chinchilla. Pascal spreading seeds that we were collected for um, annuals. So like dandelion seeds and stuff like that that are native to the area. They're not dandelions. And grass seeds because that's the chinchilla's preferred food. Then we have a, uh, a restoration area. Mainly, we have educational murals. Um, and here you can stand in front and become a butterfly. And this is the, the butterfly that actually pollinates the puya plant that chinchillas use. Uh, Rigo and Susie, Susie made these bags for us. And because in, in the area where the chinchillas are, people buy their bread daily and it comes usually in a plastic bag. So we made a bunch of cloth ones, recyclable bags for people to use. Um, another thing we've done is we've purchased a bunch of maps for the local schools. Um, that show the distribution of the flora and fauna in Chile, just to get the children interested, a little, maybe a little bit more interested in wildlife. Um, there I am collecting those seeds. And here's Rosa who cuts our wires. Uh, the, she passes out our maps. She goes to the different schools. She does them and she makes the, she cuts apart the wire fencing for our plant protectors. So this is what we do is we educate others. We make habitat and we help chinchillas. Thank you.